Let me start up, folks. Um, if I can get your attention for a little, we're, we're looking at um, at modeling uh, some of these gummies, right? And the idea is I want to see photorealistic versions of these within two or three weeks. So I have to give you some more tools to work with uh, to make your stuff work better, or I should say to make your stuff look better. Um, we're going to look at uh, some subdivided surface tools today, uh, and in particular, a very important concept, which is called edge hardness, which has to do with how you get um, both hard edges and soft edges on something that has curves. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick picture here of the Honda Element. Um, the Honda Element is one of many cars that's designed using subdivided surfaces, and there's certain things you can see about it, like that's a bevel right there, and that's a bevel and that's a bevel, and that's a bevel. And you'll see one of the trademarks of this type of modeling is curves with hard edges and soft edges mixed together. So you have to have ways of getting this to happen. Uh, let me put that back over there. So um, let's imagine that this is what we're working on right here, uh, and that, that seems fine. So. Uh, I'm going to start by putting a primitive in and then start working on that primitive to get it to the shape I want it to be. Uh, I will start with a cube. Why not? Uh, now, oh, I have something on which I shouldn't and I'll tell you about it later. It's called symmetry, um, but we'll come back to it. I'll go to about there. That seems fine and I will stretch this out. Let my A key to frame that up. Um, I should give this some subdivisions now because I know I'll need them. Uh, I'm going to need them on the Z. Uh, so I'll turn this up a little. Do I need them on the Z? Yeah, I need them on the Z. Uh, maybe not that many, maybe more like um, five, I would think. And I'll probably need them on the X, probably we'll put in three on the X and see what that looks like. So this gives me a place to start. Um, on the Y, will I put two? Maybe I'll put two on the Y, just to have more to work with. Uh, and I'll, while this is still live, I'm gonna get it into roughly the shape I want it to be. So I want it to be taller and thinner, uh, which I'll do by grabbing these various tools like that. And if I want to, I can look at the scale here. Like, clearly this is way too big. The scale here is two meters. Um, so I would probably want to scale the whole thing smaller. Ah, wrong scaler. Uh, you know what I'll do though? I will, let's take a look here. I'll thin it out. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do, drop the tool, uh, and I will take the entire item, and I will hit my um, R key to scale it universally smaller like that. You see my scale is now more like 100 millimeters, which is still probably too big for this thing, which I'm guessing is about maybe five millimeters by perhaps 20. And that's just a guess. Obviously, if you wanted to get really exact, you could measure it. Um, so I'm gonna shrink it a little bit more and hit Shift and A there, and maybe a little bit more. Uh, one of the advantages to working in actual scale um, is that um, when you do things like physics and when you look at it and put hair on it and stuff like that, everything works better, uh, which is good to keep in mind. Uh, I'm going to go along with that and say I like that, that that will work as a place to start. Um, okay, now last week we looked at uh, point edge and polygon manipulations and then we added a couple subdivision tools about beveling um, and uh, extruding which can be very useful for all this stuff. And I'm going to start with stuff like that. Um, let's see here, we have, to, uh, we have to move some edges in on the side. So why don't I start with that? Uh, I'll go into edge mode, I'll hit the two button, we'll select this edge and this edge and this edge. Uh, and I'll hold down my shift key and select these edges on the other side. Um, and then I'm going to scale that so that they come together more like that. Good, I like that. Uh, should I push them down a little bit? I can push them down actually by translating the whole mess sort of like that, which is good. That'll work for me right now. Um, now let's talk about uh, getting some bevels out. We'll get some bevels out for some arms. 
uh, which I'll put in this middle section up here, why not? I'm gonna go into polygon mode and I'll select a polygon here, a polygon here to match it on the other side. Um, and I will do a bevel, which will give me an internal, ah, let's push this this way, push, there we go. Uh, will give me a new polygon in the middle there and I will push that out eventually. Well, let me get the bevel further like that. And now I'll scale the new selection I have, which will start to push those out like that. So I have new geometry there. Now, as we said, any technique we use that adds more uh, detail is a subdivided surface technique. It takes a surface and subdivides it. Um, there's a bigger concept behind all of this, uh, which we looked at a little bit last week, which is this idea of as you subdivide things, having them head from uh, straight edges into what the approximate curves would be were they all curved. Um, and it exists here automatically. Uh, I'm gonna hit escape and I'm gonna drop everything. So I have nothing selected. And then I'm gonna hold down shift and tab and that all changed to nice and curvy. See that? Uh, I'm gonna switch it back, and it all went back to that original square shape. Now, if you look down here, uh, this says GL, and this is telling me an open GL, which is on the graphics card, how many polygons we're using. It says 140, and I believe since it triangulates them, it's 70 times two. When I hit this, notice it increases geometrically. It's now 2200 which is way more, obviously. Um, that's because it's created new facets. You can even sort of see the edge of them. See that? Um, now, there's a setting for that, strangely enough. Not that you should mess with it, but just so that you know, when we're over here in our properties panel and we look down a little bit, uh, there's a subdivision setting. And actually, we did Catmull Clark subdivision. So if I increase this, this will get smoother, but will take more polygons. Uh, I'll increase this to three. And now that's 8,000, nearly 10,000 polygons. Um, I'll increase it to six. Now it's a half million polygons. It's incredibly smooth, uh, though this will eventually slow down my system depending on what I'm working on. Uh, there's some techniques we'll be doing in the upcoming weeks where we paint and sculpt where having this extra detail is important. For now, you probably don't have to worry about it, and you can go with their default resolution of two. Um, or if you really feel fancy, go three. It's not such a big deal one way or the other. Now, you'll see we're getting closer to the shape I want, but we have that problem, uh, which Honda seems to have solved, where they have soft edges, but they also have nice, hard, creased edges. Uh, we need a way of controlling what are called the crease values. Um, Modo, uh, which is quite good, gives you the capability of, um, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to move in. Uh, 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 there we go. Uh, of deciding crease values for points, edges, and polygons. And I want to show you what this means. Um, I'm also going to show you another useful tool. Uh, I'm going to select an edge here, and I'm going to hit the L key once I'm done which will select a loop. Select stuff in an order that it's going around there. And now select the one on the other side. You know what, I'm gonna select a different loop. I'm gonna go here and I'll hit L. Oh, it's not giving me the loop I really want. So what I'm gonna do is pick this one, then pick this one, then hit L, and it gives me the loop I want. Uh, I'll do that again on the other side so you can see it. I will hold down my shift key, add to my selection, and then holding down the shift key, add to my selection again, and then hit L, and it should give me both of these loops nicely selected. Now, let's make them hard. Oh, and let's put me back up here for my own self-edification. Um, Shift and W, and then I slide. Ah, see how that says vertex map weight? And as I turn this, watch what happens when I go above zero. There we go. That's a very hard edge, and I can put it to any level of softness I think it needs. I'll go for very hard on that, just, just to say I did it, okay? Um, let me do a vertex mapping too, so you can see what that looks like. Uh, I'll go to vertices, 
I'll select that vertices and I'll select th this one over here. Where the hell are you? Oh, that's not the one I want. I want you and I don't want you. I got rid of that with the control. Uh, I'm going to um, hit Shift and W again. Gives me vertex weight map and look at that. See, it's shot right up. If I bring it down and I can do it here. When I put up very slight values here, uh, 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 it gets closer to what I want. Let's say I, I like that for whatever reason. Yeah, I'll say I like that. Might create a mess later, but I'll worry about that when it happens. Um, and just to show it to you, let's also do some polygonal map, vertex map weighting. And, and there's a bigger thing going on here. Um, you see that says vertex map weight and the vertexes are each point. And there's a whole system by which you can take every point on an object, since we know where they're made of points such as the polygons, and we can actually put a value next to it, which is what we're doing here. In this case, those values are deciding how hard or soft that edge is. But we can do it on points, edges, and polygons all individually. Uh, I'm going to go to polygon mode with my three key, and I'm going to take, we'll take all these polygons here, and I will shift and W them, and we'll slide up a value. And we'll get absolutely no change. Why, I'm wondering. Probably because I'm doing something wrong. Um, what I'm doing wrong, off the top of my head, I'm not entirely certain. Let me pick a different polygon. Uh, I'm going to take some polygons. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bevel all of these. Oh, there we go. It jumped suddenly when I right mouse clicked. Now we can slide that back down. And you'll see I can put it to different levels of hardness there. See that? Isn't that kind of cool? So, um, if I undo all of this, and I'm going to deselect, hit escape, deselect, shift W, or I should say shift tab, this is the underlying geometry that still exists. I haven't changed anything else but that. If I shift and tab again, it still remembers all that and what happened to all these edges and all that stuff like that, okay? Um, I think that's a lot to start to work with. That actually, with that, I should be able to get much closer to this shape than I've been before. So use these techniques and uh, see how far you can go, okay? Uh, let me kill this. <laughs>